name's Commander John Hiltz. I'm a Navy F-18 pilot and have been for the last 19 years in my career. I'm currently the commanding officer of Navy Talent Acquisition Group Pacific Northwest, headquartered here in Seattle, Washington. And I wanted to take the time this afternoon uh, to talk about frequently asked questions based on aviation in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. And I'll start with the one that is posed to me most often, and that's how fast are you flying in your F-18, whether it be at a Blue Angels air show or whether it be off of an aircraft carrier. And that's an always an interesting question because as you probably know, based on your physics classes, speed is calculated in a variety of different ways and uh, a, a jet is no different. Well, we can talk about airspeed, we can talk about ground speed, and we can talk about Mach number or the, or the speed of sound. And I'll focus on the speed of sound, which is relative to uh, temperature. More than anything else, temperature is gonna affect how fast you're flying in relation to the speed of sound. Therefore, it requires a lot less energy to break the speed of sound at high altitudes where the air is cold. Uh, so it's much more easy to break the sound barrier. At any Blue Angel Air Show, you'll typically see a high speed pass performed by the Blue Angel Solo Jets, number five and number six. And they're almost always going just below the speed of sound or just below uh, the speed limit, so, so to speak. Uh, I get asked often if I've ever broken the speed of sound. The answer is yes. It, and I, I found that it was a very underwhelming experience uh, because when you're in the jet, when you are in the airplane that's traveling faster than the speed of sound, you don't see anything. There's no indication. You're just watching your Mach number. And when you hit Mach 1.0, you're now faster than the speed of sound. So it's really like watching your speedometer in your car. Uh, and when you go from 55 to 56 miles an hour and you're breaking the speed limit, uh, it's pretty anticlimactic. You know, alarm bells go off or anything like that. You're just, you just kind of recognize you're now faster than the speed of sound. Uh, the other side of that though, is when you are observing something that is faster than the speed of sound. And we know uh, through experience, hopefully, uh, that you've seen a sonic boom. Uh, so when a jet is moving through the volume of air, which is essentially a fluid substance, uh, you experience a, a sonic boom as that wave reverberates through the air. You can also often see vaporization coming off the wings. And that, that happens as uh, distinct points on the jet become supersonic. As the airflow travels over parts of the jet, uh, you'll, see, you'll see vapor clouds uh, form or a, a mock cone behind a, behind a jet. That can occur just below the speed of sound. And, and you only know that you're supersonic when you hear uh, that sonic boom uh, is when the whole jet is supersonic. So airspeed is a pretty typical frequently asked question that certainly relates uh, to the field of science. The other one that's unique about, uh, about flying jets when you're flying at high speeds is you'll, you will encounter regularly high G forces or gravitational forces. The limit in an F-18 is about 7.5 Gs or 7.5 times the force of gravity which you'll experience on your body. And that feels Typically, when you pull, when you put, it's in the uh, in the axis that is aligned with your spine, and you'll feel that with the, all the blood trying to be pulled out of your head, as if someone's pressing you down or standing on your shoulders, and that's a real concern. If the blood pressure in your brain drops below a certain threshold, you'll pass out. You'll become unconscious. Uh, we refer to that as a G lock or a gravity or G force induced loss of consciousness. You'll get some cueing before that. Uh, as the as the blood's being pulled out of your your eyes, your your vision will start to decrease, and you'll start to see uh, a, a cone kind of form in, in your vision before uh, it goes out. And so we have a maneuver that we do on the Blue Angels to increase our blood pressure, and it's called the anti G force straining maneuver. And it's important that we do that on the Blue Angels. We don't wear, uh, or they don't wear G suits. G-suits are basically an inflatable pair of chaps that you put on that inflate when the jet is under G. They squeeze your legs together and force the blood or help force the blood up into your head. Uh, in order to combat that, you also do some, some flexing of your large muscle groups in order to help build that pressure up because your hydrostatic pressure or blood pressure from your heart to your head is the most important part of, uh, of, of staying conscious. So G-forces are a real issue. So we routinely uh, in flight, whether you're flying an F-18 off of an aircraft carrier or whether you're flying in a Blue Angel air show, you're routinely experiencing between, you know, six, 7.5 uh, times the, the forces of gravity. So really critical to, to stay on top of that. So that's a, a, 
a really interesting phenomenon. Obviously, we have to overcome uh, gravity to, to fly, and then you also have to be worried about the extra G-forces when you're doing a, a high-speed turn uh, or uh, coming out of the bottom of a loop when you're experienced extra G. One other neat thing that we do on the Blue Angels is fly really close together. I had the pleasure of doing this as the, the number two and the right wing pilot from 2012 to 2014 on the Blue Angels. We develop a whole bunch of trust within the formation. We do a lot of practice to start further apart and then gradually move, move those jets in closer together. We're using checkpoints that are established in the paint scheme of those uh, specially painted Blue Angel F-18s. And uh, by working on our skills and developing trust as a team, we can move closer and closer together to the point where uh, your wingtip to canopy or wingtip separation can be inside of 18 inches uh, you know, as you progress through the season. Now, another question might come up about if you're flying that close together and what if you hit turbulence like you might experience in, uh, in an airline flight? Well, the idea is that if you're flying that close together and you have a lot of trust in each other, you'll, take, you'll hit that bump together and all the jets will move at the same time. And that's, that's critical that you don't overreact uh, to those those moments of turbulence that you can take those bumps together. But we also have an, a unique uh, feature um, that we install on every uh, Blue Angel jet or that is installed on every Blue Angel jet. And that is a, a 40 foot pound spring that's attached to the flight controls. And so in order to hold level flight, you basically are overcoming that 40 pound spring. And you might ask, well, what's the point of that? I don't understand, is there, what's the difference? And the reality is you want to, because of your precision flying and flying so close together, you want to take all of the slack out of the flight controls. Now you can imagine uh, for those of you that are uh, of driving age, you know, when you drive down the, uh, the highway, you can move the steering wheel a little bit and, and your car is not going to, not going to move too much. It's pretty much going to track straight down the road. But when you're flying close together like that at high speeds, about up to 400 miles an hour, you don't want a, any extra play. You want to be in exact control. So we put that spring on there to take any slack out of the, uh, the flight controls. Now, I know there's probably some aviation enthusiasts in the crowd that would say, well, I thought these jets, which are you know, the, the latest in flight technology, have fly-by-wire flight controls or, or basically inputs that go into a flight control computer that are then sent to the, uh, sent to the flight control surfaces. And that's true. Uh, however, those inputs still come from a mechanical uh, stick, a uh, flight control stick, uh, and, and so we want, the, we want the slack taken out of there as well. So to overcome that, you basically get, well, you get a tight grip on the control stick and brace, uh, brace your arm on your leg, creating a fulcrum. Uh, and when you do that, you, you've now created a very sensitive uh, spot that is really critical to you maintaining uh, your flight controls. And in doing that, we basically uh, inhibit the ability to wear a G-suit, an inflatable pair of pants. Uh, so Blue Angels do not wear G-suits, which is different than every other jet demonstration team and every other F-18 pilot. On all of my other missions and all my other flights, I was always wearing a G-suit uh, to help overcome those, uh, those forces. But because of the flight control system, the spring and bracing uh, uh, and, and creating a fulcrum brace on my leg uh, when you're flying in the show, uh, you've got to overcome both the, the spring forces and also uh, making sure that you've got a good fulcrum uh, on your leg so you um, don't become overwhelmed with the G forces as well. So a lot going on there when it comes to flying close together. Uh, one other unique thing uh, or sort of behind the scenes insight uh, about uh, the Blue Angel jets, which are currently as of the uh, 2021 air show season are now FA-18E and F Super Hornets. Um, they have some special modifications. So uh, a gray F-18 that you see flying off of an aircraft carrier has a gun barrel, a 20 millimeter gun barrel in it. For the Blue Angel shows, those are removed and replaced with a, an oil drum. And that oil drum is filled, filled with actually vegetable oil. And then that is fed down a, a, a line down the top of the jet and injected into the exhaust. And that's what creates the smoke that you see out the back of a, a Blue Angel F-18. And it's controlled just by a, a thumb switch in the cockpit to turn a, uh, the, the, the smoke pump on. Dumping that oil in, it vaporizes in the exhaust and creates the cool smoke that makes for a better visual experience uh, at an air show. So that was a great little 
rundown of a lot of frequently asked questions. You can find a lot of this information uh, online at Navy.com or the United States Navy Blue Angels Flight Demonstration Team website. And I hope you get the chance to see this year's version of the Blue Angels uh, fly at an air show uh, near you. It's been a treat visiting with you this afternoon. I look forward to, uh, to serving with some of you in the future. Uh, and as I like to sign off on all of my emails, fly Navy. Thanks again.